Homeward Bound, March 25, The Power of the Will. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2, verse 13. The world's Redeemer accepts sinners as they are, with all their wants, imperfections, and weaknesses. And he will not only cleanse from sin and grant redemption through his blood, but will satisfy the heart longing of all who consent to wear his yoke, to bear his burden. It is his purpose to impart peace and rest to all who come to him for the bread of life. He requires us to perform only those duties that will lead our steps to heights of bliss to which the disobedient can never attain. The true, joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within, the hope of glory. Many are inquiring, How am I to make the surrender of myself to God? You desire to give yourself to Him, but you are weak in moral power, in slavery to doubt, and controlled by the habits of your life of sin. Your promises and resolutions are like ropes of sand. You cannot control your thoughts, your impulses, your affections. The knowledge of your broken promises and forfeited pledges weakens your confidence in your own sincerity and causes you to feel that God cannot accept you. But you need not despair. What you need to understand is the true force of the will. This is the governing power in our nature, the power of decision, or of choice. Everything depends on the right action of the will. The power of choice God has given to us. It is ours to exercise. You cannot change your heart. You cannot of yourself give to God its affections. But you can choose to serve Him. You can give him your will. He will then work in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Thus your whole nature will be brought under the control of the Spirit of Christ. Your affections will be centered upon him. Your thoughts will be in harmony with him. Desires for goodness and holiness are right as far as they go. But if you stop here, they will avail nothing. Many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christians. They do not come to the point of yielding the will to God. They do not now choose to be Christians. Through the right exercise of the will, an entire change may be made in your life. By yielding up your will to Christ, You ally yourself with the power that is above all principalities and powers. You will have strength from above to hold you steadfast, and thus, through constant surrender to God, you will be enabled to live the new life, even the life of faith. Steps to Christ, pages 46 to 48.